All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN Infrastructure as Code webinar. This is part of the SD-WAN uh, uh, Automation Awareness Month event. Thanks for joining. My name is Alex Young. I lead the Catalyst SD-WAN Automation Initiative within Cisco. Uh, with me today is Laurie Jakob. He's a cloud engineer within Cisco Networking's CTO organization. There are two goals that we would like to achieve. Um, the first one is we would like to help you to understand what is infrastructure as code, especially in the context of Catalyst SD-WAN. The second goal is to help you to understand the processes to use our existing infrastructure as code uh, repo to provision and manage Catalyst SD-WAN. Uh, this is the agenda for uh, today's webinar. First, we we'll, um, have a very brief introduction to Catalyst SD-WAN. Then we talk about what is infrastructure as code and uh, uh, how does it work and what is the um, relationship with Catalyst SD-WAN. And then we have a, a live demo to uh, provision the SD-WAN solution, both the control plane and the uh, branch devices. Now, given the time that we have for this webinar, um, and it does take some time for um, the code to provision the control plane. So at this moment, uh, we would like to switch to uh, start the provisioning. Then we come back to continue the, uh, the presentation. And then we also look at the result of the, uh, of the um, uh, provisioning. So let me switch to uh, the my terminal. So I'm using a Visual Studio Code and it has a built in terminal. And this is what I'm using right now. All right, let me um, start the code to execute the um, provisioning part. All right, oh, uh, I guess it's a typo to the path. So let me do that. Uh, something, oh, spelling error, my apology. This is what happens when you uh, do a um, um, live demo. I think let me go to, I think we have one. There we go. All right. So while I was uh, executing the um, uh, the code, let me switch back to the uh, presentation. Uh, given the time we have, uh, if you have any questions for us, uh, please do submit them, and we will try to answer the questions uh, towards the end of the uh, of the uh, of the session. All right. So uh, we start with a brief introduction to what is Catalyst SD WAN. Um, so Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN is a solution that applies the software-defined networking principles onto the wide area network. And the, one of the biggest benefits uh, is that it separates the management plane, the control plane, the sep uh, and the con uh, data plane. And it provides a single pane of glass to manage uh, and monitor the SD-WAN solution. Uh, if you want to learn more about Canvas SD-WAN, uh, you can go to cisco.com slash go slash SD-WAN, and we have uh, a lot of more information there where you can learn uh, the details about the solution. All right, next is uh, infrastructure as code. Uh, as more uh, companies are moving to the cloud and um, infrastructure code um, was developed a few years ago or many years ago, but getting more popular in the last few years, that helps the companies to easy their transition to deploy their infrastructure in the cloud. So how does it work? So first you declare your requirements, your infrastructure requirements or resources, or even the services that it provides in code. So it's a, a, soft, a piece of software code, uh, just like any other uh, software. Then you use the IAC2, such as Terraform and Ansible, to interpret the elements or the requirements defined in the code 
and then they will convert them into API calls. And then uh, the two will execute the API calls to the Catalyst SD-WAN, as well as the cloud platforms to provision the infrastructure in the cloud, right? So, so these are the high level in terms of how does it do that? Now, um, in infrastructure as code, there are two aspects that you went into um, more than any other um, elements. Uh, and they are orchestration and configuration. Orchestration focuses more on the life cycle of environments, for example, uh, provisioning your infrastructure, which is what we show here in this webinar, scaling or even deprovisioning, right? If the, uh, you want to tear down the setup, you can do that with the, uh, within the, uh, using the tool to do that as well. There are many popular tools available and Terraform is, is one of them. In terms of configuration management, uh, it focuses more on automated configuration of the uh, application software or hardware. And there are also uh, many tools available and Ansible is one of the most popular ones. Now, um, so how does that infrastructure as a code um, means in the context of Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN? <clears throat> Before we answer the question, let's take a look at what a typical infrastructure system will look like. Uh, so we have three layers here. At the bottom, you have the infrastructure layer where you have your data center, your network uh, environment. And then on top of that, you have a, your application runtime platforms where you provide storage, memory, computing power to the applications running on the top, right? So application layer at the top, it uh, uses the resources provided by the application runtime platforms which sits on top of the infrastructure layer. Now, Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN sits at the infrastructure platform layer. So when we say, you know, IAC4 in the context of Catalyst SD-WAN, it means that use IAC to position, manage, and operate Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN in the cloud. Uh, what are the key benefits of um, using um, IAC? Uh, we highlighted four key benefits here. Uh, there are more, but those, these four uh, we think are the, the key ones. First is versioning. So you have the soft, because you write the your infrastructure in code. So just like any software, right? So you have different versions of the code and then you can um, uh, incrementally add additional feature or uh, changes to your code and then deploy them. Now, if something, the latest version does not work, you can always go back to the, uh, the peers version. And because of that, you can focus on the Delta changes in the versioning to help you to identify what are the issues that uh, makes the, uh, the new release doesn't work. So that's the first benefit. The second is agility. You can quickly and easily, because the software quickly spin up the infrastructure in the cloud. The third benefit is reproducibility or repeatability. Uh, what that means is that you use the code, you can uh, um, recreate the same environment um, every time when you use the code because it's the same, right? And then the last benefit is uh, uh, scale. So with the code, you can automate the process to have a large scale deployment of SD-WAN, which we're going to show that uh, um, in this uh, in this demo, uh, that you can use the code to modify and then apply it to a large scale uh, um, deployment. All right, what are the key use cases uh, for Catalyst SD WAN? There we highlight the three here. Again, there are many other use cases as well. The first one is for managed service providers that they will use the code to with different parameters. They can spin up quickly and easily spin up the infrastructure, the SD-WAN infrastructure for their different customers. The second use case is that uh, if you already have uh, existing uh, infrastructure as code deployments or workflows, what we have, we've shown you here, you, you can easily integrate that into your existing uh, workflows. The third is for a use case is testing, right? You can quickly spin up uh, an infrastructure, do some testing or maybe development, and then you can tear down the infrastructure. All right. Um, what are the tools that we use in this uh, demo? Uh, we use three uh, most popular ones, Ansible, Terraform, and then Docker. 
uh, Ansible and Terraform, uh, they both can be used to um, develop or create the uh, code. Uh, they both can be used to deploy, configure, and orchestrate your infrastructure. Um, but most of the time, what we have seen is uh, people use Terraform to for provisioning, for infrastructure provisioning. And uh, one of the main reasons is uh, it keeps the state, right? You remember what you have configured versus, uh, you know, what you would like to uh, add to the uh, infrastructure. Ansible, um, most of the uh, people that I was seeing is using Ansible for configuration management. All right, and then the other tool that we use is a Docker. Uh, Docker is a open platform for software development or running your applications in a uh, isolated environment called a container. Uh, typically what you would do is within the container, you uh, pre-install known good resources that are required for running your applications or for your development. And because container can run on uh, many platforms, uh, um, uh, OS, and because it's closed environment, so you would get the same result every time when you run the container. It doesn't matter which platform or OS you're running, right? And it's also ID for uh, CICD pipelines as well. All right, at this point, I will turn over to my co-presenter, Laurie. He's going to work us through the process of provisioning the SD-WAN control plane. Laurie. Thanks a lot, Alex, for the introduction of infrastructure as code and how it applies to SD-WAN. Um, I'm going to go over how we can deploy the control plane in a public cloud, specifically AWS. Um, Alex uh, already talked a little bit at the high level on how infrastructure as code tools work. And um, let's go a little bit into more detail on how we are going to proceed today. The first step, we will um, clone the repository that contains all the code necessary for the deployment. We will share the exact link and uh, command to clone it uh, just a bit later. But first we get the tools, then in the next step, we define our intent and the parameters of the SD-1 deployment that we want to achieve in a configuration file that is both human readable in the YAML format and computer readable. We then have a set of Python scripts that will take this input and generate Ansible configuration files. And this means the inventory for Ansible, if you're familiar with that, and then some variable files. And the reason we don't directly edit these files is that there is a lot of uh, repeated code and boilerplate variables that have to be present in different places. So we have this high level tool, which we call the config builder to generate them for us. In the next step, step four, Ansible will use these configuration files that were generated in the previous step and create Terraform variable files and then some bootstrap configuration files uh, in the format of cloud in it for Terraform. And then Terraform will take this input and as uh, Alex talked about, we'll call the actual public cloud APIs to instantiate virtual machines based on the um, configuration that we started with. So in order for us to provision an SD-WAN control plane in AWS, uh, we need a few things before we get started. Well, obviously, we need an AWS account that has a user with the necessary privileges to create VPCs, VMs, and so on. We have to figure out AWS authentication. Uh, there are several ways to authenticate programmatically to AWS. They're all documented in the AWS website. Um, there is, we are using in this demo, the access key secret method, 
where we just provide an environment variables for uh, the uh, tooling with the secrets. This is a bit less secure. We also support a token-based method where you use CLI tools to get a token and then you use that token instead of the actual access key secret. Once we can authenticate against AWS, we have to determine the instance types uh, for each of the control plane VMs, vManage, vSmart, vBond, and also the region for, uh, for the deployment. And these are inputs that uh, the automation will need. To determine the instance types, uh, we linked here and we will have at the end of the presentation access to this presentation. So the cisco.com website documentation has a full page on AWS installation of the control plane. And it also has a bit of a guide on the selection of uh, VM types based on the requirements. So the installation size, how many edge devices you plan to have and so on. Very important. Um, before you begin, you need to define the organization name. This is a string that will be used in different places throughout the SD1 deployment process, including certificates, um, some configurations, license files, and so on. So it's very important that you define it and you use it consistently everywhere because otherwise the control plane and fabric will just not come up. Lastly, obviously, whenever you want to deploy a VM in the public cloud, you need a VM image. In AWS, we have AMIs, and you need to have access to the Cisco SD1 control plane AMIs. Now, the Catalyst 8000 data plane are available in the marketplace on AWS. However, the control plane is not. So if you want to experiment with um, this approach, infrastructure as code for the control plane, you will have to contact the Cisco Cloud Ops team, provide uh, a few details about uh, your deployment and the planned use, and these AMIs will be shared with your account number. So let's start with the high-level intent definition. Uh, the configuration file has a few different sections. Uh, there is a generic section uh, about the infrastructure which applies to all VM, control plane, each control plane, edges, and so on. Usually, for now, what we have here is just defining the NTP server. Uh, time synchronization is important uh, so that we make sure that certificates are unexpired, and then also for mutual TLS. Um, we also have a section for controllers where, again, we have a generic section that applies to all the controllers, um, where we define the public cloud provider, the region, and so on. This is common, the organization name that I talked about, and then specific sections for each of the different control plane VM. So for vManage, you have to define the image ID, the AMI that we talked about before, the size of the instance, the instance and some configuration, system IP, and so on. So this is the input to the whole automation pipeline. The workflow itself and the pipeline, the way we have it organized is this day X abstraction that uh, people like to talk about in the automation world. So day zero means the uh, deployment and the initial configuration. Day one, uh, the SD1 specific higher level configuration like templates and policy. We put here day n for deprovisioning, which is also part of the life cycle. Uh, sometimes you you need to delete. And the, the um, use case that is um, Alex mentioned about the managed service provider is that you can bring this up uh, whenever you need. And when you don't need an SD1 fabric, you can just bring it down. So that's part of the workflow. And then we used day minus one to define the root certificate authority. And so this is optional in case your organization already has a certificate authority, 
that can be used for signing certificates, you don't need to generate or create a new one. However, for the purposes of this automation and the demo and, and so on, we have all the automation in place for creating a new one and that will be used throughout the, um, the demo. At the very high level, this is the intended deployment. This is our intent. Basically, you have on the left AWS. In AWS, we want to create two VPCs, one dedicated to the control plane in US West 2, where we have these three VMs that form the control plane. And then we will have a VPC uh, data plane uh, for the edge device in the same region. And in GCP and Azure, we will have in each one a Catalyst 8000V as a data plane, and the, the three data planes will form the SD1 fabric. So once we define our intent, um, we can we can clone the SD1 DevOps repository. It is publicly available, open source. It's uh, on the Cisco DevNet GitHub organization. The repository itself is called SD1 DevOps. And the code that will allow you to create the control plane in AWS is on the cloud branch. So, you know, there you have it. It's the um, new way to clone it. There are a few options that are not usually seen in um, git clone commands. So the fact that we want to check out the cloud branch and recursive because we also have two um, git sub modules that are part of this uh, repository. And um, the way this repository is organized is very similar to the workflow that I talked about. So we have the day X uh, part of the repository where we have code related to each of the phases. Uh, so day minus one, as you can see, day zero, day one. On the left, you have config. This is the tool that I talked about in, in step two that takes the YAML file as input and generates the Ansible um, command that is written in Python. And then on the right, you have the code for creating the Docker container itself. Um, the reason, uh, as Alex already, already alluded to, is to have known good tooling. So we lock down the versions of Terraform, Ansible, Python, all the modules um, that uh, are used for the different automation. And obviously, we keep them up to date, but uh, we have a verification pipeline. So whenever we change version, we create a new Docker container, we run all, all the tests, and then if it's good, then we can keep uh, start using the new version. But the point is that we have this Docker container that uh, can run in any environment. So if the VM or the automation or the pipeline environment where you run it doesn't matter that much as long as it supports Docker. And at the bottom, you can see the two Git sub modules that I talked about. It's Terraform SD1 and Terraform Edge. And the reason these are sub modules and, and uh, are developed separate is because um, they can be used separately. So assuming you have a Terraform shop and you already use Terraform and very familiar with it, you can skip the Ansible part and just take the code from these repositories and integrate them into your other setup. Um, so a little bit more detail about the configuration part. We created our configuration YAML file. And then we have the config builder tool. You see here as a shell file because it uh, invoked as a shell to process some environment variables, but it's a Python code that takes Jinja templates as an input and then creates the SD1 inventory file. SD1 inventory file is central to the forking of Ansible and in Ansible everything uh, is working around this inventory. So whenever you call an Ansible command, you say which host from the um, inventory is applies to and so on. And then we define the variables 
for each of the day phases. And uh, this is done by the config builder part of the code base. So uh, in terms of how the deployment of the control plane works, this is at the high level. And now Alex will actually demonstrate you live uh, how uh, all this is going to work in practice. All right, thanks, Laurie. Okay, so we have the, um, go there, share. Okay. Can you see the uh, screen, uh, Laurie? Uh, I think I'm still sharing. Okay. Uh, let me do this. All right. Okay. Let me share. Okay. Great. So um, remember at the beginning of the um, um, webinar, I mentioned that, that we started the positioning part uh, of the control plane. Now, as you can see, it finishes the um, executing that code and then uh, it. Um, give you the external IP address of the vManage, which is the manager of the overall SD-WAN solution. And we would use this IP address to log into the, uh, you know, the Kettle SD-WAN vManage to uh, manage the whole solution. Um, now at this point, uh, we finished the deployment. We will start the configuration uh, of the control plane. So let me uh, start executing that. Okay, all right, Laurie, you want to help the uh, uh, audience to understand the um, the process for this um, for this young uh, playbook? Yeah, so by now the actual VMs have been deployed, and uh, vManage takes a bit of time to add the second disk for the database format. It, it reboots, then it starts all the systems. So it takes a while until you get to the point where you can talk to the API. Now we're at that point, and the second part of the day zero automation will do the formation and the creation of the actual control plane. So now the VMs have been deployed. They don't talk to each other yet. We have to set up trust between them by terms of certificates, as, uh, as I alluded to before. So what happens, the automation creates a certificate signing request on each of these devices, downloads them, and then uses the certificate authority created in the day minus one phase to sign those certificates and then add them back. And now if you can see the task, task add certificate to control flows. Uh, and before that, we had signed controller certs. So uh, the controller certs were signed, and now they are being uploaded back to the devices and once they are uploaded, the, uh, these devices can set up a DTLS sessions among them. Uh, DTLS sessions don't come up unless they can mutually authenticate each other by these certificates. So once these DTLS sessions are up, they can exchange information and each control plane device can perform its intended function. So vManage will be the management plane, vBond, is the orchestration plane, which uh, knows about NAT and all these things and uh, helps devices connect to each other. And then vSmart is basically the route reflector and then policy, uh, it, it also pushes policy to these devices. So now as this um, provisioning phase, second phase, the configuration part finished, uh, it, it will take a few more moments until you know uh, everything I said starts happening, uh, like the DTLS session come up. But then the actual control plane is formed, and you can start onboarding devices. Great. So at this moment, let me start to run the um, onboarding the branch devices. Similar to the control plane, it does take some time. So let me um, uh, run the code and then we'll take a look at the uh, cloud providers, especially AWS, and to see you know, the control plane 
the different uh, controllers like v manage v bond and smart are being um, 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 deployed uh, in AWS. So let me uh, start to execute the onboarded device, uh, the edge devices. Okay, while you're doing this, let's go ahead and take a look at the um, uh, AWS. So this is my AWS account. And here, let me do refresh. And as you can see, we created a SD-WAN VPC to host the controllers. And if I go to the um, uh, EC2, look at the instances. And as you can see, we have vManage, vBond, and v, um, uh, vSmart, vBond, and vManage that are being uh, instantiated on the uh, AWS account. Now, on Azure, because um, we haven't, we just started onboarding devices. So soon after it's done, then we see the um, VNAN, VPC on you know, Google being created, and also the Edge devices being uh, deployed on the, uh, on the, on the cloud providers. Uh, let me go back to the presentation and continue with the edge um, uh, deployment process. Okay, so uh, the goals in this um, session is first to deploy the uh, branch devices. In this case, is the uh, Cisco Catalyst 8000V and uh, in the cloud. Once they are uh, being deployed, uh, we add them to the uh, control plane that that we just positioned, all right? So we have, uh, we've deployed the device into three different clouds, Azure, Google, uh, Google Cloud, and then AWS. Um, similar to the um, control plane um, provisioning process, there are also some prerequisites before you can actually do this. First of all, um, you need to set, establish a account with the cloud provider that where you want to deploy the uh, edge device uh, with the necessary um, privilege as well. Especially, uh, you want to make sure that you have the right to uh, execute API calls to those um, uh, cloud providers. Uh, you also need to set up a smart account and a virtual account on software.cisco.com, which allows you to generate a license file or what we also call it as the provisioner file. In this file, you will have a list of the Catalyst 8000, the other devices, edge devices that you would like to be part of the uh, SD1 deployment. And the vManage will look at this file to only accept the devices in this file to be added to the, uh, to the uh, control plane. Uh, you also need to identify the um, Catalyst 8000, the image names from each of the cloud provider. Uh, which we're going to show that in a, uh, in a slide later on. Uh, in terms of authentication, um, as Laurie mentioned earlier, uh, each cloud provider, they have different methods for you to authenticate to them. Uh, in AWS, you can do access key or you can use uh, access token. Uh, in our demo, we use the access key um, uh, secret to authenticate. Google Cloud, uh, you can use access token or service account key, which is a JSON file that you download from Google, uh, Google Cloud. Uh, this is, and this is what we use in our uh, demo as well. For Azure, you can use service principle or use CI to authenticate to Azure. And in our demo, we use the CI um, uh, method to authenticate to Azure. All right. And <clears throat> here are the names uh, uh, in the different providers for the uh, uh, Catalyst A1000V. Uh, we choose the uh, bring your own license uh, image files because we use the license that, that from Cisco. And you want to make sure that if you uh, purchase license from Cisco, then you want to use the BY to bring your own license images from, uh, from the cloud providers so that you won't you know, uh, double pay, you know, license on the cloud providers, also you pay the license you purchased from Cisco. So on AWS, um, typically what I would do, I would just search Cisco-CAK, then you would give you the list of the uh, versions that are available and choose the version that you would like to, uh, uh, you would like to use. Um, and Google Cloud, similarly, you know, I do a search on Cisco-CAK and then you give me the list. 
Azure, it's a bit simpler. It's the release um, number and dash with BYOL. So you can use this um, um, as a reference while to aden um, identify the image um, names from the uh, from the cloud providers. Okay, so um, uh, Laurie showed up uh, this target a bit earlier. So this is the um, target the deployment once it's completed. So on AWS, we have a VPC that hosts the controllers, the, the managers, the validator, and the uh, controllers. And then we also have another VPC that hosts the CH uh, device, which is the uh, Catalyst 8000B. And similarly, on Google Cloud, we have a VPC to host the uh, Edge device. And then on uh, Azure, we have a VNet that hosts the, um, the CS device as well. All right. So with that, let's go back to the um, my terminal and see where we at with that. OK, so it completed the edge onboarding. Now let me go to the um, cloud providers and then take a look at, uh, let's first take a look at the uh, uh, AWS account. So if I do a refresh. And then you can see we have a CH um, being initialized um, the, uh, on AWS. And then on Azure, we have this uh, SD-WAN resource group in uh, which in uh, the resource group, we have the CH um, um, being um, deployed on Azure. We also have the service side uh, and then transport side uh, definitions as well uh, on Azure. And then on uh, Google Cloud, do a refresh. Yeah, and then we have a CS being deployed on Google Cloud. And if we go to take a look at the VPC network on Google Cloud, and then you see that we have a service network and then trust and everything defined um, on Google Cloud. Now let's uh, go uh, log into the vManage. Um, uh, we have the... Um, we manage IP address earlier from the um, um, uh, provisioning part of the control plane. So let me copy this. And then we go to your Okay, so um, the devices are being onboarded. So let's take a look at the. Um, okay, so here you can see we have one uh, VBond. The new name is a validator. We have one smart controller, and then the manager uh, deployed. And then if we go at, take a look at devices, so you can see uh, the controllers are being deployed. The edge devices are just being. Um, initialize so it takes a bit time for you to see them to uh, to be up and running and reachable. Now, if I go to the um, my terminal and then I'll show you the actual configuration file that we use. Right. So this is the uh, config file that. Um, Laurie highlighted uh, in the earlier presentation. So within this file, uh, so this is a file that you give the parameters, uh, like for example, the, uh, the provider's name, the uh, region they want to use, the image file that you want to use. You enter your parameters here, and then we use the config builder to based on the parameters that you have in this file to build the configuration, which you know early, um, uh, Laurie showed on the slide earlier. And based on that, it generates the uh, inventory file for the Ansible playbook. And the Ansible, uh, within the Ansible playbook, it actually calls the Terraform to create a Terraform plan. Once the Terraform plan is created, then apply to the uh, uh, plan against the SD-WAN as well as the uh, cloud providers to provisioning uh, the infrastructure. So within this file, we can see, hey, we define the providers um, 
AWS, GCP, Azure, the NTP server, and then within GCP, you also need to create a project uh, and then you copy and, and paste it here. We also support VMware, but in our live demo, uh, in this session, in this webinar, we don't use that, but you can certainly uncomment, uncomment out this and then use uh, uh, um, VMware as well to deploy on VMware. And then we have the, uh, next we have the uh, controller section, uh, you know, AWS, what is the region you want to use? What is the software version? And, and then the organization name for your SD-WAN deployment. Now, this is very important. It has to be the same um, in your um, software.cisco.com. When you download the license file, it needs to be the same here throughout the uh, that particular uh, SD-WAN deployment. And then you also uh, define vManage, what is the AMI? Like Laurie mentioned it, you can submitting that request and an email to Cisco, and then you can, you know, they will provision, give you the uh, name of the, uh, uh, the AMI uh, that you can have on your AWS account, right? And then use the username and password, vBond, similarly, you have the, uh, the AMI image, uh, vSmart, and then we have the uh, uh, edge devices. Similarly, you know, you, the provider name, the region, the AMI file, the software version. Now, on the um, web edge, the um, edge devices, you need to get the uh, UID, and you can get that from the license file or the provision file that that we mentioned earlier that you can generate from software.cisco.com. Okay? And similarly for Google Cloud, and then for Azure as well. Okay. Now let's go back to the uh, vManage and take a look at and see if um, uh, the uh, Edge device is clean um, uh, above Wendy. It does take some time, so um, we can always come back and then after the uh, at the end of this session, we can always come back and take a look at the uh, devices here. Oh, actually, they all been um, deployed up and running, so we can see we have a. Uh, edge device on AWS, and then the edge device on Google Cloud, and then Azure. Great. All right, let's continue the presentation. So in summary, we um, um, uh, highlighted what are the um, benefits and the use cases for IAC. Um, essentially, IAC helps companies to accelerate their adoption of moving to the cloud, right? and then it provides versioning, agility, reproducibility, and uh, you can use that code to uh, deploy a large scale deployment. And with the code that we shared it with you and is uh, publicly available on our DevNet repository, you can use that and then um, modify it to your environment and then using start using that to automate the uh, you know, de deployment of SD-WAN. And you, we have seen our customers using that to deploy in hundreds, hundreds of um, um, brand, uh, uh, sites as well. Now, like I mentioned earlier, uh, this is part of the, this webinar is part of the uh, Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN Automation Awareness Month. Uh, we're at the second week. Uh, this Thursday, we have a workshop that we walk you through a day two use cases uh, using the code that similar to what we uh, demonstrated today. Next week, we focus on SAS tree. It's a wonderful um, tool, uh, tool set that you, know, uh, you can use to um, do a lot of day one uh, and then day two um, um, uh, management of the SD-WAN solution. Okay. With that, um, thank you very much for attending this session. Uh, we'll take a look at the questions that we have. And let's see here. Do we have any questions? OK, so we do have a question here. Is the license transferable? Yeah, so uh, for the license part, we can get that to you, but for the um, um, demo. It is uh, available with the within the uh, DevOps uh, repo. So uh, we have the link. We share the link to the uh, re <coughs> repository where you can uh, take a look at the code that we have. We also have a link to the video that Laurie created 
to walk you through the uh, steps in more detail. So yes, you definitely have that um, link that you can follow uh, to um, to to uh, to uh, execute the files. With that, um, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time to join us today, and um, take care. Yeah, thank you for joining.